Hello, yes, why attacking the Jews is futile and counterproductive. That's right, I make this video after a video uh, where a rabbi reveals all, confesses that Jews are behind open borders and pushing or forcing third world immigration on the white world. He also um, leaves a disclaimer saying that it's nothing to do with the Jewish religion or Judaism. These are just renegades and outcasts and are pushing their own agenda. It's nothing to do with the Jewish religion or Judaism. That may indeed be true. I don't know. But this is the latest video doing the rounds now. This is going to be the latest video the white nationalist community is going to rave over. Because you've got this so-called confession from the rabbi now. That's it. The game's, game's up for them and all this nonsense. But it's not. Right? Now the video before that. Do you remember the Barbara Spectre one? That was the latest that was the one before that, should I say, that was doing the rounds. And everyone was raving over that, that one where Barbara Spector uh, says that Jews are the lead, uh, will have leading roles in changing Europe from a monolithic society to a multicultural one. And because of our leading role, we'll be resented. Don't you think it's a bit obvious, these videos where you've got Barbara Specht and an hour rabbi confessing that the Jews are behind all this. It's like as if the baiters want us to attack them. You see, even if it's true, right, you can't do nothing with it. You can't sell it to the public. And if anyone believes they can, they're a bullshitter or a low-grade con man, as Nick Griffin said, right? And rightly so. Nick Griffin once said attacking the Jews is political suicide. So why have you got it on your Facebook page, the rabbi video? Well, you've got it on your Facebook page because you're no longer involved in politics. You're in the lunatic fringe. That's the only place that will accept you. You're, in, you're pushing cultism and hobbyism and nonsense. And that's where you, you've found your home now. You need to get out of it and get back involved in real sensible politics. But anyway, don't you think these videos are too obvious? Like as if the golden is the, you know, provoking us to attack them. Because once you start going down that road, attacking Jews for behind, for being behind whatever, you, you're finished, you've had it. Even if you're armed with the truth, even if you're telling the truth, you, you've finished. You see, the anti-Semitic hurdle in front of us, Schindler's List, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, The Holocaust, and God knows how many books, documentaries, films and whatever. You can't get over the anti-Semitic hurdle, no matter what truth you talk no matter it doesn't matter you cannot get over it and our enemies know you can't right and also it it takes us it takes us away from real politics and dealing with the issues problems and tragedies our people face on a daily basis which is not in that video below or the Barbara Specter one that they're not interested they don't care it'll bounce around the little playpen and you know it will so it takes us away from tackling the real problems right you see to sort our problems out, right, we cannot, we've got to pick the best tactical approach and attacking the Scooby-Doo's is not the, the way forward. It's not, that's not the proper tactical approach. It's counterproductive. You know, the rabbi uh, makes, as I say, a few claims, disclaimers, it's nothing to do with the Jewish religion or uh, Judaism, but... Like George Lincoln Rockwell said, the late great George Lincoln Rockwell, during the uh, heavy time of uh, Soviet espionage in America, where 80 to 90 percent of the spies were convicted were Jews, and that's a fact, it's not me making it up, right? The bigger community actively opposed any exposure of it. So to say that they don't know what's going on or they don't know what's happening is nonsense, of course they do. Uh, the book there, Revolutionary Yiddish Land, is an interesting um, statement by the author. Uh, I'll give you a shortened version of it. It says, Socialist, Communist, Bundist, Zionist, Trotskyists, intellectuals, manual workers embodied the radicalism of a Jewish working class that glimpsed the Messiah in the folds of the red flag. Well, that says it all, you see. Early communism, the Communist International, was a Jewish prophecy, right? That's how they saw it, right? Without a doubt, that, that's how they viewed it, should I say. 
It was like some sort of Jewish prophecy, like heaven on earth now instead of waiting for the Messiah. I know it might sound mad, but that's why so many rally to it. Now, it's in their own words. Don't, you know, take my word for it. It's in there. Read their own books. Also, I'll give you some other facts as well. The Cambridge spies, right, all of their controllers, all their recruiters were Jews. Right, all of them, so the last man and woman. Litsy Friedman, Edith Sachitsky, Kissy Harris, Reiser Bechman, Arnold Deutsch, and supposedly, according to Roland Perry in the book at the back there, the fifth man, Victor Rothschilds. Not Roger Hollis, Victor Rothschild. And also, it was Flora Solomon that threw Philby, uh, uh, ratted on Philby to MI5, he was a Soviet spy, because they were getting close to... Um, to Victor Rothschild, and that's that's what Roland Perry says in his book. That's why how the why Flora Solomon through Philby in. Also, as well, which is interesting, the book there, uh, Treachery by uh, Chapman Pincher, and in the book he talks about uh, all of them, the Cambridge spies and all their controllers. But he also mentions Neville Lasky, who's president of the Board of Deputies of British Jews at the time in the 40s. And his brother, coincidence of course, was Harold Lasky, the Marxist Labour MP. Now, Le Neville Lasky provided the accommodation for a lot of these Soviet spies. One in particular, Ursula Kaczynski, uh, East European, East German, sorry, East German uh, Jewess. He provided the accommodation for her. Now, Neville Lasky's wife, her brother was in the Communist Party of Great Britain, and his, Neville Lasky's wife used to visit Ursula Kaczynski, and according to her, Ursula Kaczynski's daughter, they used to have long talks in the back garden. She had a shed in the back garden, transmitting back to Moscow, you know. Now, you're telling me them two didn't discuss what was going on, and Neville Lasky didn't know. And also, here's another interesting tip bit. Remember Arnold, uh, Oscar Deutsch? Oscar Deutsch. Odeon Cinemas, Oscar Deutsch entertains our nation, yeah? Well, he used to have Sabbath dinners with his relative, none other than so uh, Cambridge spy controller, Arnold Deutsch. They used to have Sabbath dinners together, the capitalist religious Jew and the communist atheist one. So you're telling me Oscar Deutsch didn't know what Arnold Deutsch was up to. So this nonsense that the bigger community doesn't know what they're up to and has nothing to do with them, well, like Rockwell says, why did they actively oppose any exposure? Of course they know what's going on, right? They know exactly what's going on. But anyway, it can't be sold to the public, all that information I've got at the back. I just read it just, you know, for historical uh, purposes and whatever, right? And just to uh, broaden me knowledge on Soviet espionage and who the spies were. Now, we can't sell it to the public. And that's why all these videos, Barbara Spector or the rabbi left the link below, we're wasting our time. Let's deal with real, sensible, practical politics and let's not have the enemy drag us away down a dead-end road that's going to take us nowhere fighting Jews, cultural Marxism or God knows what else, which the public doesn't give a toss about. Okay, thank you.